Another Tisha B'Av, another day sitting on the floor, fasting, reading Eicha, mourning over the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. But the Tzadikim teach that the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash is really the core, is the essence, is the source of all brokenness in the world. Of all of the brokenness in our history as a nation, in all of the brokenness in our individual lives, all of the darkness, all of the scattered ashes of those things that went up in flames, it's all rooted in this primary destruction, in the covering over, in the concealing of the heart of the world, of that makom, of that place where heaven kissed earth where the Shekhinah, where God's presence was revealed, was shining from one end of the world to the other. It's all wrapped up into this day. And our hearts on this day hold all of that brokenness, all of that pain, all of the cries of children, of adults, of the elderly, throughout our history, and all of the brokenness and disappointments and shattering and loss of innocence in our own lives. It's all wrapped up into this remarkable day of Tisha B'Av. In the next half hour, we're going to take a walk down memory lane. And we're going to remember brokenness specifically by remembering what the wholeness was that we lost. What things were like. Worlds that are no more. Individuals we're going to speak about who only a few months after the stories that are told about them were sent up in the smoke of the gas chambers. Ben Stern, a remarkable individual, a survivor of nine concentration camps, a man who at nearly a hundred years old remembers things from 90 years ago with clarity and lucidity like they happened yesterday, takes our hand and walks us through what it was like to spend Yomim Neirotim by the Imre Emes of Ger. What it was like to sit at the Shabbos night tish of the Piyasetz Nereb of the Eish Kodesh Chusei And when we listen deeply to these recounts firsthand and we're able to bring ourselves into those experiences and what that must have been like and to hear Ben's descriptions of what the Eish Kodesh looked like on Friday night and to listen deeply and hear the echo of those Hasidim singing only a few months before their world was destroyed. To hear that echo within Ben's rendition of Kol Mekade Shevi'i. When we listen to him talk about his Chavrusa Yidl Bartmitzer and Rav Yaakov Merker, the Rosh Yeshiva of the Piyasetzni Yeshiva, let us remind ourselves of what we once had and what we no longer have as a result of the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash that we mourn today. Vanished worlds, worlds of spirit, worlds of depth, worlds of yashras, of spiritual maturity, of godless, that were ripped from our hands by the most barbaric forces that we could ever conjure in our worst nightmares. And in so doing, may we be able to tap into the brokenness. May we be able to remind ourselves of just how much we're missing. May we be able to encourage ourselves with those futuristic echoes that are reaching us from the time of Geula, from the time of redemption, where Ben and all of us will once more be reunited with the Mizritcha Rebbe with the Imre Emes of Ger, with the Piyasetzner Rebbe, with all of these individuals, with Ben's parents and Ben's family members and all of the Hasidim to give us strength, 
to continue marching to the finish line. I want to thank Ben for giving so magnanimously of his time and for sharing his inner world with us. I want to thank Charlene Stern, Ben's daughter, for facilitating the interviews and Reb Zach Kamenitz for conducting the interviews as well as Reb Shalom Matan Shalom for helping set up and arrange this incredible project. I also want to thank all of those who contributed to make this project a reality, particularly the Facebook Pia Setzner group for all of those who contributed. Thank you so much. And I want to close by reading you a passage from the book, The Soul of Jerusalem by Rav Shlomo Katz, a compilation of teachings of Rav Shlomo Kalbach on Yerushalayim and the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. And he writes in the beginning of chapter 3, I want to share something with you that I heard from an Alexander Chassid. The Chassid said, do you know how holy Shabbos was in the town of Alexander? The way the Rebbe sang Shalom Aleichem, the way he sang Eishas Chayim, it was absolutely out of this world. After the davening, we all came up to the Rebbe and said L'chaim, and we would hold his holy hand. The Rebbe would look at us right into the depth of our neshamas. Do you know how much he cleaned our souls when he looked at us? How much he put our souls in the right place? The chassid paused, and then he said, okay, this was all very holy. But let me tell you, when I was in Auschwitz, somehow, one way or the other, I suddenly found myself together with ten other Alexander Hasidim. Every Friday night, we would sit and tell each other how good Shabbos was in Alexander. Can you imagine how deep it was, the way we relived those Shabbosim? It was much deeper than the way we felt when we actually were in Alexander. So when did Shabbos and Alexander Mamish get into these Hasidim, into the deepest depths of their neshama? When there was no Alexander anymore. In one sense, we only truly connect to things when we lose them. We miss them when they are gone. On a deeper level, we can miss things while we still have them. So friends, as we take this journey back in time, into pre-war Poland, and as we remember what it was like for Jews to be able to share the presence of towering giants of spirit and of goodness, Let's re-experience that. Let's step into Ben's shoes and re-experience the Pia Setzner Rebbe's Tish and re-experience Yom Neiraim by the Imre Emes of Ger and to feel the brokenness of the destruction of that world that's rooted in the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. My name is Ben Stern. I was born September 1921 in Bruch Hashem. Thanks God, in uh, three more months, I'll be a hundred years old. Mazel Zov. I owe my soul to up there. They don't want me. <laughs> and I was born in Warsaw. Mother and father, they, they, she was in business, uh, traveling to Danzig, and, and, and father was a, a boyer. A boyer is a vermittler. It, it straightens out two people have problems. They come into a boyer, they don't go to the rabbi, first they go. They do go to court, they talk in front of a bearer and he, he writes down and in a, in a few days he comes back with a verdict and he gets some money for it. And the bridge was a house, a rabbi, Shlomo Rabinovich, from Masrich. The rabbi was from Masrich, but he had a seating in, in, uh, in Warsaw, just like the princess, the rabbi. I was in the Warsaw ghetto. 
1940 and 41, beginning 1942, I got sick of typhoid and uh, we had no heat, no electricity. No, I had a hot plate, just a little pot to put down. You could only light uh, wood and you do it uh, during the day because at night the Nazis did see smoke going out and they or the Jewish police, it was uh, very hard. To... So I was so sick, and my father and mother didn't know what to do. They picked themselves up and went to Rabbi Shlomo Rabinovich, the Madrike Rabbi. And they tell him, Rabbi, he said, go home, he'll be okay. I was his sonic. You stop and think that this is with me in my old age. But that, it's, it's such a schutz. It's a schutz. Then we moved in 1928. We moved from Warsaw to Morganitsa. My uncle was running the business with the mother, with my grandmother, and he decided to go to Palestine, which he went and he turned over the business with the bubble, my grandmother, with it, and we, we moved from Warsaw to Mogilnica. My father was a Mazriche, a Mazriche who was a small town in the middle of uh, Poland somewhere, just like Piazzetsna and others. When I was uh, moved to Mogolnica, I started a public school. A year later, I, I sta started in the afternoon uh, Hebrew. I, I knew Hebrew from Warsaw, but it uh, started uh, Mishnayit, prepare a word and so on. My father was teaching on Sabbath. We went out to the forest and I, the grandmother, mom, and my younger brother and I, we were four of us and one stepbrother, a half brother from mother's side. Hmm. She was married prior Okay, I was rich, I have it. Sabbath, we went uh, to the rabbi down. The we, I was five, six, uh, up to seven years. Uh, either I was by the rabbi or the, my father left me by the grandfather, Rab Yosef Chaim Stern. He was a seven times shots. He learned seven times shots. When he passed away in 1934, uh, just like my father, he left Yerisha. The shots a box with the uh, Gemurads and, and a kettle, a white kettle in a strabo. My father wore the strabo every Sabbath 
every holiday. Once we got to Magalitsa, there was no Piasetsna Rabbi, there was no Shtibu, no Hasidim. There were just Gere, Gere. Did you hear about Gere? Our Matra Alta. Rabbi, our Matra Alta. Hey, the, 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 the posts, the posts were shaken. That's how many he drew for the high holidays, 30,000 chassidim. And uh, when I was nine, ten years, I was going into the Jewish stable Shabbos. My father didn't mind it, so I, he knew that I am in in Jewish stable. Now it came the holidays, the high holidays. They rented a horse, a driver with a horse and wagon, and they put up uh, boards, seats, six, eight people. And, uh, I was a youngster, and another Shemesh Bam's son, he was the um, same age as I was, so he came along. To, and the people in Gare, they rented out every inch of space for the Hasidim. It came the holidays that 30,000 Hasidim came to Gare for the high holidays. And the people who owned the apartment when I'm the attic to sleep. And I remember uh, there was some Bukhirim uh, in the 20s. Or the, so I carried the children with another fella. And we, Friday, we carried the children. And Saturday, we brought them back. And again, uh, it was a big yacht, a big place. In the middle is the building, two story, and it was the Bismadrish. And the second floor was a viewing. So, and, and the head in the middle was a square open and to look down a balcony, yeah. And the Hasidim, the young, younger one, they tied themselves to the porch before the rabbi came, and they hung dead all the servants to watch the rabbi. But before, when we arrived, we got the room, we ran to the stay in line to shake in the rabbi. And then there was like that circle going around and around until one end reached the rabbi Sunday. And then between the, the push, the people were pushing the, the so one, one, one has it screamed, hey, we've got a little kid here. So they picked me up and over the head, <laughs> they handed me over all the way to the rabbi. And I shook into the I wasn't. I didn't wash my head for hours. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed of being uh, being able to shake hands ahead of all the others. That was a church. So I went uh, two, three times for the high holidays. The air was different. 
you felt each uh, a power in the room that you couldn't visualize, you could not touch it, you could not, but there was a higher being here. I understand the shul, the rabbi shul, the garret shul, is still standing. The, the Gentiles don't want to take apart, they don't want to touch it. You cannot go in there, it's closed off. In Polish, it says, it, it's a holy place. Then, in Bogonita, next to us, there were we in the building and a other Jew, he had a bad hump and crooked a little. And he was the Rosh Yeshiva of the Pesach Yeshiva. Yaakov Merke, Yaakov Merke. Tremendous position to be the Rosh Yeshiva in Varsha. And then he came home just for the high holidays and passed away. And we were eating circus. Circus every time, circus, we, we, we had the circus and we, the women brought down the food and, and they left and then it was talking uh, uh, Hasidism and the uh, Piazzetsna and uh, that's what uh, when I got closer to, to uh, Bar Mitzvah they were talking about and, and they agreed on that I'll go to the Piazetsna Yeshiva. I went with another boy, Yidl Bartmesser, 14. We went to Warsaw. My half-brother, the other half-brother, one was in, in Palestine, the other half-brother lived in Warsaw. And when the grandfather passed away, his youngest son, moved in with the wife and four kids. And my brother had a folding bed in the kitchen. I slept with him and the kid, the, my friend was with me. He was uh, bedded out on the counter. Workbench. It was a workbench during the day, and at night the kitchen became a, a sleeping quarter. The end of 1934 and 35. Friday night, the yeshiva will and we were about 60, 80 guys. There was a, the rabbi had a tremendous big apartment. The kitchen, this room, the table, the Shruda the, the table, from here to the door. That's how long it was. And he and the other side, there was a door, a private door to the, where the rabbi was. Uh, I hear the rabbi make Kiddush, Shabbat, and I remember it well. And I wanted to give you a sample. Rabbi had a Shabbat. Obviously, every, every rabbi had a Shabbat. The Shabbat was going in and out and going in. And finally, he said, the rabbi's going to come soon and quiet down like a fly. And the rabbi 
said, good Shabbat, quietly. And he took the Kiddush Rebecca and silent, near silent, respect. May he hear a way he more Shavra Morodot from from law from very law to burst out Shavra Maruna that welcome the elephant and loud he said made the boy be a good and then made the kiddish and the shamas brought the was the hand and started. To cut the mud, handed out Shrayim. Shrayim, 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 all the way down. Shrayim. And uh, little Peter, tell me them got, the students got a little, uh, a leftover, a ghost. But uh, no meal, no food, by the table whatsoever. I wore a strammel every day. Zadonic carpet, a silk coat. Rabbi Elamelech came to the yeshiva not so often, but he came in and he got tucked with the Rosh Yeshiva with the other teachers. We had three classes. I was obviously the beginning. So uh, he did not spend time with us. You got to know there was no organized place. We had a place where the Yeshiva was we were learning. From there, in the middle of the week, we were invited for lunch in different homes. They walked around and baked food, and gathered food, or the bakery, whatever they was food, and they baked it, they served it. And we cooked our soup with bread or raw, and that was the cooked meal of the day. I'd see him. I'd see him now. What can I tell you? I eat full beard, but not. Brown, but uh, between the uh, blonde and uh, and brown, very very respectful. He opened the lips, the mouth, and uh, expect to hear words of wisdom, encouragement. Punam, so I have to. He, in my eyes, uh, it was my, in the 40s, uh, high 40s, or low 40s, and uh, smiling. There was a tremendous respect. It was a luxury for you to look at the rabbi's face. Yeah, yeah, very gentle. I would say law. Uh, 
with Carl. They had so much a year dates. Yeah. I had so. So I my books swirled, all kinds of swirled on, on one wall. The other wall looked like a, a, collab a collateral. I could move it out or move it in. I, I described the sleeping quarters and, and, and the other side, they, they would go again. What's a huge kitchen? Uh, a huge kitchen. But we had swarm gemuras, in the Talmud, Rache, Teutschrats, no secular subject. All together on a table, a bench on both sides. Ich in der Nebelschleusen Rücken, mit Kette bestabe Bier. Steier macht's im Batalas, sei auch mal so lieb, und sei auch mal so lieb. Sei auch mal ganzig so lieb, ich meine, ganzig so lieb, ein paar Jahre. No, 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 secular homes, but we were invited for, to sleep over the, at the night, the watchmen, not all of them were from our consider At the rabbi, it was mirrors. Come I can't to me, Karela, cause I'm a chabas, kadas, bahalo. Sakura, I have a boat of people. You show my face and dig a I have a night, I'm a hacky baby, you know, yeah. That was a, the height of the Tsuda. The Tzmiras, the, the Kiddush, the Kiddush itself was the high point of the Tsuda. Uh, People like that are not being born no more. I want to tell you, the, the generosity to the kindness, you could read off his face. I was very, very, very warm. I have a inner feeling from the Madrid Rabbi, from the Ger uh, Rabbi, the Piazza Rabbi. I have a inner feeling about them, the respect for each and every one that special in individuals that they, they speak on behalf of the Rabbinic but they are down to earth. Hmm. I am lucky and I've dealt with three rabbis at different times and each one was a, a foundation to keep it up, to grow, to move forward and, and, uh, with kindness.
Oh, yeah. 